This is uh, slide nine in our imperialism unit on China. Um, European countries had long had designs on China. It's a very large country with a lot of natural resources, a lot of people for uh, trade markets and such. Um, in the late 1800s, China uh, was very vulnerable. Okay? They had fought a long war with Japan, um, which they had lost, uh, which left them very weak and open to other attacks. European powers, such as uh, Germany, uh, Britain, France, Russia, um, all decide it's time to move in. So uh, if you notice the, uh, the map over here on the, uh, the right, this is China here, okay, and all the little uh, diagonal lines, the different colors there, um, are what are called spheres of influence. There you see up at the top here, foreign spheres of influence. These are all areas that different countries had exclusive rights to trade. Okay? So um, these areas here with the, uh, the light brown diagonal lines, these are all Russia. Okay? Um, these uh, diagonal lines here, that's Japan. This is Germany. Uh, this is the British right there. Uh, this is France down here. So these are all areas that... Um, those European countries had exclusive trading rights in China. They came in, claimed their land, called them spheres of influence. Now, who do you notice is missing? The United States, right? This all happens in 1894-95, around there. Um, Spanish-American War had not gone on yet. We weren't quite the world power we would become. Um, and when China got divided up, the United States got left out. Right? So in the summer of 1899, we're about five years after all the spheres of influence start here. In the summer of 1899, Secretary of State, a man named John Hay, uh, and this is his picture here at the bottom. There's John Hay. Hay sends a letter to the leaders of all these countries in China, Russia, Japan, Britain, France, Germany, that comes to be known as the Open Door Note. Okay? Um, and basically, Hay um, urged all these countries to respect certain Chinese rights and the ideal of fair competition within their spheres of influence mainly because we didn't have one. He wants to declare China an open door so that any country that wants to can come in and trade with China, trade with each other in China. Um, he declares China an open door. Now, eventually, everybody agrees to the policy. Everybody except China, that is. Um, in 1900... Okay, Chinese nationalists, known as the Boxers, because they trained in martial arts, um, the Boxers decided they were going to fight back in what comes to be known as the Boxer Rebellion. The Boxer Rebellion. These are Chinese nationalists who've decided they've had enough of foreign powers telling them how to run their country and coming in and taking whatever they want from their country. So uh, they're going to fight back. They um, take over Beijing, or Peking at the time it was called. We know it as Beijing. <clears throat> they take over the diplomatic city uh, of Beijing, uh, killed over 200 foreigners, uh, thousands of Chinese Christians, missionaries, had been there converting. Um, they killed the Christians, captured uh, foreign diplomats, okay, um, and held them for a couple of months. Okay? Now, the boxers believed that uh, if they practiced these certain rituals before going into battle, that the enemy's bullets could not harm them. 
Okay? Uh, and these certain rituals involved getting stoned on opium. Okay? Um, opium was uh, uh, grown in India by the British uh, and then taken and traded in China. Uh, so one thing the British do is get a whole bunch of Chinese addicted to opium. Um, what's known as the Opium Wars, which you probably, hopefully, remember from talking about uh, in your World Civ class. But the boxers would get all high, hopped up on opium, and then go into battle. Okay? Well, all these countries, the United States included, R Russia, uh, Britain, Germany, France, all sent armies to China to put down the Boxer Rebellion. And the boxers, you know, stoned out of their mind on opium, go into battle believing bullets cannot harm them. Well, they get mowed down by machine guns. Uh, this is over very quickly here. Um, now, in to punish the Japanese, and here you see the, uh, the, the political cartoon down here, okay? The, the Chinese boxer here fighting with his sword, and there's Uncle Sam fighting with, I don't know if you can tell what those are, they're supposed to be battleships, right? So the modern army of the United States against a guy with a, a, a dagger, a knife, basically, okay? Um, but the, uh, the Boxer Rebellion would be quickly put down. China would be told, no, you will trade with us when we want to, whatever you want, or whatever we want you to. Um, and then we slap some reparations on them. Now, reparations are payments for war damages. So not only did we go over and kill all the boxers, then we send them a bill for the trouble of having to go over there and kill them. Okay? Um, all the countries together combined uh, charged China $333 million. $333 million. Right? Um, the U.S. got about $25 million of that. Right? Um, so I, we send them a bill, basically, for the war. Um, and China is going to have to pay it. Right? This... Involvement with the West by China is what will set the stage for China to uh, decide it's had enough of foreign influence um, and to fight it every way possible they can uh, up through and immediately after World War II. So this is going to set the stage for a lot of the dealings, uh, future dealings with China.